Hello, sports fans. Rubo here with Lee for Caravel Gaming. Um, you've been watching a few of my videos, and I think it's about time we sort of explain a lot of the card game terminology. I mean, uh, I've been playing card games uh, getting close to 20 years. What about you, Lee? About 10, 10, 12 years now. Yeah, yeah, and, and there's a lot of phrases from card game to card game, which are pretty much the same, and they're always going to be there. So uh, let's crack on, anyway, with this uh, nice little list we've got going up here. No particular order for some of this stuff, but we thought we'd start off with a few of the easier phrases that we've got in the game. So, first of all, coming from the top, we've got playing off the top. I'm sure you've heard Ripple use this a lot. It's when both players are down to no cards in hand, and you're basically just looking to play the cards off the top of the deck, really. That's as Yeah, as there's no thinking about what you... So very often as well, it, it, it means that there's, there's there's nothing on the board as well, isn't it? Yeah, that can be the case in Hearthstone a lot of the time. Uh, you just trade off until there's nothing left, and it's whoever draws the best cards in a row wins. It's a bit different to top decking. Top decking, you can have lots of cards in your hand, but none of them being as good as... <gasps> How lucky! It's like the, the how lucky moments as you draw the perfect card for that time off the top of your deck. That wouldn't have swung the game on the previous turn or on the next turn. It's just like on that. It has to be the specific moment with a specific card. It's like you're it thinking, if I could stack my deck perfectly, this would be one of them. And on a slightly different note, one we actually left off there, uh, which is interesting, is outs. It also comes sort of fits into top decking so people often talk about how many outs you've got in your deck yeah you can play into a situation that sets you up to to be able to draw an, an out which is a way to beat the current situation you're in that you necessarily haven't got in your hand up to start with at the well time. the perfect situation would be your opponent has 50 power of creatures on the board so you're going to die next turn but he's only at three life and you're playing a mage, so you've got all of you've got several spells in your deck to burn him and kill yeah, him. Yeah, so just fireball, frostbolt. You know, you'd be looking. So there, you're out. Yeah. So yeah. you might have like six cards from eight, nineteen in your deck. Yeah, and playing to your outs would be say he's got this fifty power on the board supposedly, and instead of going and trying killing an irrelevant guy, you go in, you put him down to three, and just look to draw that card off, yeah. off perhaps a cantrip you've got in your yeah. hand or something. Yeah, so you're playing to you outs there. So, vanilla. Now, we don't really hear this phrase much in Hearthstone, but it's certainly there's certainly a few vanilla minions. Yeah, you've got your uh, anything with a blank text box, really. You've got your vanilla 2-3s, your vanilla 3-2s. So, the vanilla 2-3 would be the crocodile. Dial Crocolisk? Yeah, it's technically vanilla. It is a beast. So it is a beast. It's got it's got for. some relevance there. Okay, so uh, and the Murlocs and the Murlocs, but definitely the Yeti at four five. Yes. That's a vanilla because it's not even a beast, even though it used to be called a beast as well, didn't it? Uh, that was its actual name, wasn't it? Yes, but it is now. Just I'll tell you, the, the Fen Beast was renamed Fen Creeper because it got confusing. Ah, right. <laughs> I, I've not looked into much of the Because Fen Creeper's not a beast. Um, and we have the Ogre, the 6 7 Ogre. Yep. That's vanilla. Because that's got no creature type, has it? No, it's not no creature. I'm just trying to think if there's any other ones. Uh, War Machine, the 7 7. War Golem. War, War Golem, Golem, that's seven, it. Seven, yeah. um, so if you can think of any more vanilla creatures, be sure to point them out to us. Um, dorks. Now. For me, anyway, it, it varies from you know player to player. But for me, a dork is pretty much like a one-one. But he doesn't come by himself. So like the paladin, the paladin's ability would summon an army of dorks. Yeah, like you're just chaining out dork after dork, and you you don't really apply any value to them. You just sort of you you just launch them at whatever needs to be got rid of. I also think it's quite a northern England turn of phrase as well, dork. So, uh, like, if you're Jewish, you would say schmoes. Look yeah, at all my schmoes. Can we think of any other phrases that would... Some people just say guys. Dude, In with my guys. guys. Monsters. Yeah. Uh, so, again, you know, if you think... If you've got any local colloquialisms, please feel free to point them out. Um, Lee, what is a bomb? It's anything that basically completely swings the game around to... So, Close monstrous. to game breaking. Yeah. 
So in Hearthstone, you're looking at most of the legendaries. Uh, a lot of the the big, the big fat. Really, well, we didn't mention fat as well. Like, what is fat? It's like probably about five five, isn't it? A five five or bigger is fat. I don't know. <laughs> And Anything if you make a 1-1, one, one, it's thin. <laughs> Anything below is just a bit of gristle, I guess. Gristle. Gristle's around 3-3, three, three, yeah, and like uh, Scrawny is 1-1. One, one. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the bombs are just... I mean, especially because they're legendary, you're going to only have one of... So that makes it even more bomb-specific. It's kind of linked into a top decking as well. Like you, you generally, oh, I lost because you top decked a bomb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then that bomb... Put some beats on me. What is what is beats? It's just any kind of dealing or taking of damage. Yeah, but it's it's the total sum of damage from minions on that turn. So if like four minions attacked, you would say I did him nine points of beats this turn. Yeah, another phrase I've heard is man damage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to nine points of burn, which would be if you did three frost bolts. Yeah. So it's mostly just doing the damage added up of your minions. Yeah. So if it's spells, it's burn, and if it's minions, it's beats. <laughs> okay. Um, so this sort of ties in a little bit. Pinging. It's, it's very came from Magic: The Gathering, but you're looking at like your old like prodigal sorcerers. Tap, do one damage to target creature or player. So those kind of cards do exist in this game. Obviously, we don't we don't tap, but uh, the mage's ability. That's yeah, one. That's he, a that because you you ping something for one every turn. You've got a knife juggler as well, and the rifleman. He comes in and does one. And the one. elvish archer. And the elvish archer. Also so they all ping for one. And but what what would what would we call the bigger version of pinging though? Because I mean, you've got the other guy that does two damage when he comes into play. I guess it's shooting. Shooting, yeah, shoot shoot for two. That's that seems fine. So we've got pinging and shooting there. And finally, we got this phrase, uh, which is pretty self-explanatory: uh, "Going to the face." Yeah, it's when you just decide to either throw your burn spells at the opponent's face, or all your guys like, "I want to go to the face this turn." So you ignore to... everything else and just focus on his life total. Yeah, it's generally that turning point in the game as well, where you decide to go for the face to try and transition to that other part of the game where you're just trying to finish him off. Well, um, now we move on to sort of one of the important aspects of, of uh, any CCG, and they certainly do apply to Hearthstone, which are your resources. And we, we kind of figured on there's about 3.5 resources yeah, in the 3. game. 5. There's definitely three. We're not sure if the fourth one could be officially count as a resource, but we, we do think it, it, it could certainly be in there. So first of all, cards, either... In your deck or in your hand, right? Yeah, yeah, or even on the uh, on the table. The card you got on the table, your board presence. That would maybe fall under tempo. Um, so it simply refers to, uh, particularly, um, you uh, the warlock uses the cards as a resource, yeah, because yeah, he's definitely. got a lot of random discards for like uh, Doom Guard and Succubus. And um, what's that zero casting cost spell? Uh, soul fire. Yeah, so that would be how he would use his cards as a resource in that particular tech. And also uses uh, his uh, life tap is the mechanic to turn his life into cards. So you're trading one resource for another. So in this case, his life again is, you know, as as the whole resource me mechanic goes, the warlock is probably the most relevant for this kind of thing because oh, he yes. he does use his life very directly as a resource plus like flame imp hurts him yeah. um hellfire does three damage to everything yeah, so so he can't do that if he's yeah. left three and unless um and then we have tempo as a resource this seems this seems a little bit more abstract not immediately obvious it is, it is a little more of an abstract like theory so to speak because you can sometimes you want to instead of progressing your board state you're looking to you maybe play a Blood Rage to draw some cards, but that's money you could have spent making a guy. Yeah, I, I point this out in a few of my videos, don't I? Like, it's like when you're you're playing against the Mage and they cast Arcane Intellect on turn three. So they're giving up their tempo because they could have put a guy onto the board to instead... 
have a different resource instead, which is uh, cards. Yeah, I think managing the tempo, the cards, and your life is a very important part of Balancing, the card games. Yeah, good any deck, card yeah. game, really. And knowing when, which resource is the most important. Uh-huh. Because you're not going to look to turn your life into cards if you've got one card left in your library. But we'll come on to all of that when we uh, talk about the uh, game, state of the game. Yeah, the state of the game. Yeah. And finally, um, your weapon has durability, and therefore your weapon durability itself must be a resource because you've got um, some pretty sick weapons like Doomhammer that has eight, eight attacks. Yes. And Wind Fury. And Gorhal potentially has up to seven. Yep. Um, then you've got the, the more normal weapons like Arcanite Reaper, yeah, and Fiery War Axe, Fiery War Axe, and um, the Paladin One True Silver, True Silver Champion. Yep. And they all have like two or three, so they're very quick to do. But they are resourced because you don't have to use it immediately. You can hold on to it for a, a better occasion, so to speak. For a better time to gain new tempo. But, you know, since we're talking a bit about, a bit about tempo, um, this might be slightly more relevant for Magic the Gathering, but it definitely still applies to Hearthstone, although the game phases generally shift a lot quicker in Hearthstone. Yeah, I find there's not a lot of uh, mid-game or middle-game mm-hmm. phases in the game. Yeah. It goes straight from early game, trading backwards and forwards, trying to gain an advantage, straight to, right, I'm ahead, I'm going to start killing So. Him. Early game involves, for me anyway, I mean everyone has their own definition, for me it involves getting as much board presence as, as possible. Yeah, I think you spend a lot, the other way you can do it is trying to get as much damage in the early game in as possible, yeah. you can look at so, that way. So, card advantage isn't as important in the early game, you very often will give up, say, a bit of life and uh, a bit of card advantage to get control of the board in the early game. Yeah, definitely. And then it starts becoming a little bit more relevant in the mid game, and then late game, if you've run out of cards and your opponent's got four more, he's been managing his card resources better, perhaps, and he's got a head there and he's got a slightly better chance because you're top, you're playing off the top of the deck sooner than him. So the late game involves. Going for your opponent's life, particularly, it's trying to win the game at that point. It's a point where you decide, um, I don't want to try and get the board position, I can't improve my board position anymore, I'm just going to try and smash you in the face now. Yeah, you just, that's the point when you perhaps start going to the face and using your burn cards instead of to control the board, you start mm-hmm. using them as reach maybe, which is another term we've not, we've not called yet. Reach is how far... Once you've got your minions in and they've all got killed, how much more damage you can get through. So like mages, fireballs, like you've got your shamans with the lightning bolts and things like that. But it's not just the direct damage you can do. For example, it might be like if you have silence effects in your hand. You can go, this gives me reach because the first minion you play with taunt, I can now nullify and continue to beat you up somewhat. Yeah, definitely. That's a definitely a very good way to look at it. Because... At that point in the game when you're considering reach, you're generally a more of a aggressive deck and you're just only bothered about things that stop you finishing your opponent off. Okay, so here's a scenario. So you have six minions, all of which are 2-2, and your opponent has um, an 8-8 tree with taunt. Yeah. So you can silence it to get in 12 points of damage. And that gives you a fair amount of reach. And then on the next turn, he plays, let's say, another 8-8 tree with taunt. So you then have a a decision whether you want to run four guys into it to get two points of extra damage through, or whether you want to try and wait a turn to draw another silence effect to be able to get eight damage in. Yeah, it's always a very difficult decision to make. And, and and these all of these kind of decisions come under the term reach. Yeah. So now uh, we got a few uh, other phrases, general phrases that we've we maybe dropped a couple of times already. So we've got a card advantage. Just like whenever you can 
draw cards is the simplest way of doing it. Other other ways is when you can use one of your cards to deal with perhaps two of those so, cards. So drawing cards is p what we call pure card advantage. But then we have sort of pseudo card advantage, which is when you hurt your opponent's um, cards. So yeah. in other words, dealing with two of his cards with one of yours. I'd also class pseudo card advantage of perhaps playing like say uh, in Hearthstone a Shattered Sun Cleric. So you're you you're on say it's turn turn three, mm -hmm. and they've made a three drop. And they, you well, let's your, say they have a two two and you have a two two. Yeah. And you make your three three that buffs your two two to a three three and kill their guy and still have your guy around. Mm -hmm. I'd say that's kind of pseudo card advantage yes. as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, and very important. <laughs> card advantage yes. in Hearthstone um, and that kind of fits into this other phrase here on the right which is two for oneing. yeah it's used a lot, in a lot it, of I mean games. it doesn't just have to be a two for one yeah. it can be like a three for one or a four for one so the perfect example of this would be flame strike yeah flame strike you can usually set up a ridiculous for one so to speak like even I've seen five or six minions get killed by it so that's just how the mage then Transitions into his late game as well, and that, back to a previous. And game. that gives him card advantage. Yeah. Um, also fitting in with those two phrases is one you'll hear a lot, which is value. Is how can I get value out of my cards? So it'd be like to get value out of your cards. Going back to the whole buffing scenario, uh, mm. you, it's in. Oh, sorry. I've got a perfect example. Uh, you've got a spell breaker in your hand. Do you play it immediately onto an empty board or? Do you try to, to get, get value? value? Yeah. Like to deal with a protector or, or a bomb. Or yeah, something. like um, like you know your opponent has got um, Twilight Drake in his deck. So do I hold it and turn his 4-6 Twilight Drake into a 4-1 by silencing it? or You know, so that's, that's the idea of getting value out of your cards. It's like, what, what is the best way... Of using my cards because it might not be the best way to wait because that four three could be beating your opponent up and getting his life down yes. is also getting value sometimes out of your cards. A lot, sometimes a lot of people fall into a trap looking for more value than they should be. Like the value from playing the four three onto an empty board is like a value in tempo as opposed to a value in dealing with something of my opponent. So going back to, uh, I think, the earlier thing, back here, your resources. So you get value in different ways. You can get value from card advantage, from life, in other words, either gaining life or dealing damage to your opponent, and you can get value from tempo by getting good board position, like the Shatsun Cleric yeah. allows you to get good value in that respect. Yeah, the, the hardest thing in the in any card game is deciding when you need to get value in live tempo cards and what's what's the best time to do it really mm -hmm. um, so let's look at trading then trading minions particularly or or you could trade cards for minions or not not trading as in I've got this card <laughs> I want yours there's card. no trading in Hearthstone we all already know that but well, just for people who played the other card games want to point that out. So when you run your guy into their guy and they both die. They trade off. Yes, trade off. Um, but you can also trade in different ways. Yeah, you can trade, say, a card in your hand for two of their cards or for one f one for one. It's all about swapping something of yours for something of theirs. Basically, uh, on the basic is most basic of terms. Yeah. Um, or if you're a priest, just straight up Pinching all of their stuff with mind controls. It's, it's technically still trading one for one to yeah. start with. It's just when you beat up their minions it's with their own minion, then it's a bit better. Which uh, can bring us into the curve as well. Because sometimes if your trading can be better for you. If you're trading something you spend two mana crystals on for something, say, they've spent four mana crystals on, that's put you ahead on resources. It's a very... It's and not, tempo. Yeah. It's not always relevant. Yeah. Well, a perfect example would be if you made a 2-1 Murloc on turn 1 and your opponent uses his coin to play a 3-2. And mm. then you use your 2-1 to kill his 3-2 and you play your own 3-2. So you're just that trading up the turvy is something I always try and do when I'm playing house. I've not had quite as good results as Rebel has, but I'm getting there. Uh, and, of course, you can... Um, but you always try to 
trade uh, advantageously. Say, for example, you're playing against a rogue, and a rogue has the hero's ability of giving himself a dagger, does one damage for herself. Um, so if you get, like, uh, the 3-1 Wolf Rider, it's not really going to do much damage to the rogue. So that's a card you would say that you're always looking to trade. You want to get a one-for-one. One. You're happy with a one-for-one. One. Like with some cards, you really want a two-for-one and a three-for-one. And then there's times where a card like that wolf is going to be a naught-for-one. Yeah. But because the wolf has charge as well, it can gain you tempo as well. Mm-hmm. So you can switch that back in your favor. So it's not necessarily a bad thing always trading one-for-one one, as long as you gain some tempo from it, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, so fits in a lot with tempo is uh, board control so um, you, again it's uh, another thing you see in a, a lot of my videos uh, you know it's the thing that I'm big on I think it's something that's very intelligent to be big on like if you're in charge of the board it means your minions generally get to attack first Yeah, I mean that is the big thing with Hearthstone which is that the person who gets to attack decides how all the trading happens, which is this other phrase here. Yeah, which means they generally so get more value. You get more value and it's more advantageous to you. You know, you can throw your 2-1 at a 3-2, whereas if it's your opponent's turn, he'll throw his, or she, he'll throw his 3-2 at your 3-3. Three, three. Yes. So, <laughs> it, so in one scenario, when you're attacking, you're left with a 3-3, three, three, that... And in the other scenario, when they're attacking, you're left with a 2-1. And it's those differences, in uh, depending on who has the board control, that decides what the final scenario is. So the board control is basically defined as you're the person making the decisions. That's mm-hmm. when you have board control. Yeah. Uh, and the last one we, we're going to talk about here, uh, which we briefly, mentioned briefly with the flame strikes, uh, is the sweepers. Yeah, sweeper's kind of a sweeping turn, part of the fun, to say anything that deals with multiple creatures at once. So we have, like, uh, Consecrate, Consecrate, Holy Nova, Nova, Flame Strike, Blade Flurry, Hellfire, Hellfire, Lightning Storms, the Shaman one, I believe, it mm-hmm. does everything. Rogue has the Blade, yeah, blade you mentioned Blurry Flurry, so what classes are left? Druid? Druid? It has swipe. It has swipe. Oh, it has starfall. Starfall and swipe. Starfall as well. That that's uh, a sweeper. Um, any other classes? Uh, if you do think of any more sweepers, be sure to mention them in chat and how stupid we are for not remembering them. Just just before we move on, I want to go back to talking more about curve because we mentioned it with results to trading, but also it's very curves. Basically, description of how your if you were to lay your deck out how your casting costs go through the deck on your way up to your biggest, from the smallest to the biggest. And it's a very important consideration when you're building a deck, say in a Hearthstone Arena, to have like a balanced, either a balanced curve or a front heavy curve. I would say anyway. Mm -hmm. If you watch Ribble's videos, he likes his front heavy curves. I do like my curves, yes. Um... So we talk a lot about the decks, but particularly the decks themselves can be broken down. Um, like you have aggro decks here. Yeah, turn aggro decks more about doing damage as efficiently as possible, as quickly as possible. Before your opponent can deal with Bef- all the cards. Yeah, before your opponent can essentially stop you doing what you want to do or run you out of cards. So there. They those decks use their cards in their hand particularly as a resource. Like they get rid of them quite quickly. Yeah, and uh, they try and use the turn their life, which isn't very important to them because they expect their opponents to be on the defensive into either more cards or more board presence. So warlock would be particularly good because yeah, definitely warlock would be particularly good because they can they've got a built in turn my life into more cards and any. More cards they draw get turned into more powerful minions because you know you just got yeah, a lot of and cards. and of course the minions themselves very often deal damage to the warlock, yeah, so, so that you get more powerful versions of other minions for the same mana cost. Yeah, so the warlock deck would use its life 
as a resource to draw more cards and make bigger monsters and generally be a very good shell for an aggro deck. Mm -hmm. You also get other aggro decks coming in a different way, like the more like I've heard him refer to as swarm decks, where they just make as many little so it's as like, possible. But Warrior would would fit into that, like uh, like more in Hearthstone, it would be lots of charge guys. Yes, and it would be again. I'm not going to try and kill your minions. I'm just going to go to your face. Yeah, it doesn't. It's I got a chance to make the other person worry more about the board control, and they just want to smash the your face and just go to the face. Mm -hmm. And then you make like an Arcanite Reaper, do another ten with that directly. Use like a silence ability if they've got a taunt in the way. So aggro goes back to the term we used before, like it uses a lot of like reach, so to speak, to get the job done. Yeah. And then finish him off with Leroy Jenkins. Yes. And he's an excellent challenge because who cares if they have two whelps in the dead? Um, and then we have mid range decks, which are generally, for me anyway, they're, they're simply efficient decks that do okay against aggro and do okay against tempo and sort of do okay against combo. They try to be a, a bit of everything. Don't a, bit, they? a bit of a jack of all trades, really. It's like just the most efficient guys they can play. They can play the aggro role against the control decks. You can play the control role against the aggro decks, and just they basically do what they need to do give, with the given situation and matchups that they have. Yeah, I mean it's an important. You, you just mentioned roles, and it, you know it's one thing we do have to touch on, is that um, any time two decks play each other, there is always one of them is always the control deck, even if both decks are aggro, because one deck is going to kill the other person faster. So the deck that is going to kill the other person faster is the aggro deck, whereas the other player has to realise he's not going to win if he carries on playing the way, and he has to change his style to become the control deck. Yeah, it's it's even more pronounced in Hearthstone because mm -hmm. minions can attack each other. Yeah. So it's all about knowing who's the beatdown to coin a magic phrase. Yeah. Uh, then we have we have a few combo decks in the game, and they're, and they're interesting little combo decks. Like before, um, before the uh, wipe, we had the Miracle Rogue deck, which involved uh, playing lots of spells on one turn, either through um, the Questing Adventurer or Edwin Van Cleef. Yeah, and then giving them a stealth, and then beating them up yeah, for thirty damage in one turn. Yes. And then we have, of course, the uh, Priest um, Life deck, which involved, say, uh, I, um, well, it could be any minion, but particularly the Light Spawn. Yeah. And then giving it a, a fat ass, turning his fat ass so he'd have like a naught five Light Well or a five, five Light Spawn. He'd give it 30 on the ass, and then he'd play like Inner Fire. Yeah, and switch it round and punch him in the face. It's, it's basically you're trying to stay alive long enough to mm -hmm. do what... Just have one minion alive for the start of your turn. Yeah, and do something really degenerate to your opponent that they can't really do anything to. Mm -hmm. And then we had um, an interesting recent deck that just came out which was uh, <laughs> I, I guess Warlock combo. Yeah. So you got these summoning portals out and then you play... Uh, one, hopefully two knife jugglers, and then you play some of those brewmasters to bounce each other back to the hand, and of course the knife jugglers deal damage to the opponent or the minions each time that happens. Yeah, it's a, it's a combo deck, but it's more of a, a system combo where you just keep repeating it. Your opponent can't really do much about it once you've got it going. You just As soon as you run out of mana, you keep a brewmaster in hand, they make some stuff, next turn you shoot it all in them. So it it's it's quite a very degenerate thing to do, and your opponent can't do much of it. Mm -hmm. uh, likewise, another combo would be, say, using gadgets and auctioneer and zero casting cost spells to go all the way through your deck in sort of one turn and get lots of really powerful things. Yeah. So, you know, there are combos out there in Hearthstone. They're not as you pronounced. They work a bit harder. Yes, definitely. And then we have uh, the control decks, particularly. What do we mean about control decks in Hearthstone? Generally, I'd uh, define control that uses all its resources it's got available to... Well, gain stop, life. To basically maintain its life total yeah. for long enough that the opponent runs out of resources, mm -hmm. and then... It's no longer a threat. Once they're no longer a threat, you can kill them with, with anything. whatever, yeah. A 2-2 like yeah. dark, 1-1 dark. 
over 20 turns and they can't do a thing. Or what happens generally in Hearthstone is the control decks will go, right, stop you doing everything you're doing. Make a bomb. Make a bomb. Make a... Uh, Maligos. Maligos or something. Ragnaros, whatever. Make three Maligoses and um, then cast a spell that does 26 damage or something. And just moonfire you for 16. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, that that you that could also be a combo, couldn't it? You know, if you make Maligos, then make Faceless Manipulator, Faceless Manipulator, and then double moonfire. Would that yeah, be a def- combo? Definitely, yeah. Kills your opponent. We can't do much about it. So yeah. Takes a couple of turns to set up, but... As long as you're alive to, to fire off that spell. Although maybe if you've got innovates and mm, no, I think you're still stuck at around 15 mana, aren't you? Because you can have the two innovates and the coin. I don't think you can get more than 15 mana on a turn. No, no, I don't think you can get more than 15. <laughs> no, I can't work out where to do it. Um, Watch this space. And I don't think druids can make their spells cheaper like warlocks can with the summoning portal either. No. Oh. oh, yes, you could have two... Um, Two of the little two twos. Pint size summoners. Yeah, I guess. So that would make Malagos like seven and Faithless Mapia. Well, I mean, it'd make the first Malagos seven. The others would still cost the same. So you could have like potentially 17. Turn, turn, turn eight, you could do it maybe. So there's a lot of cards. Yeah, surely it's just better just beating him up, right? Yeah. Anyway, guys, um, a couple of times in my videos we tend to attack with our guys and we're trying to think of uh, phrases we would use equivalent to the amount of damage we've dealt that turn uh, and we definitely like if you've got like a, a one one um what they called silver hand recruits yeah, yeah. that you would def and you hit your opponent you would definitely nibble him for one yeah, right nip, nip him or in, nibble him for one in in the same way that you know if you go to one of those little stores with the fish that take the dead skin off your foot, they nibble. Yeah. That's the, it's, it's, you know, so it's like a little irritating thing. Barely noticeable, but could be very valuable. Yeah, you can uh, poke your opponent for two. Yeah, so we, we, uh, poking is definitely a, a, a well, two damage you ability. You your, uh, poke your opponent for two, maybe at the start of your turn. Feel, feels about right. The bigger rifleman, would you say, when it yeah, comes into play? Pops, would you say that's a poke? For two. Yeah. And then uh, three damage seems to be beat. So, like, um, a Shattered Sun Cleric beats for three. Yeah. Um, what else beats for three? What's, what What's feels like it beats? What's the... The imp? Flame Imp. Flame Imp beats for three. Knife Juggler. Lots of the three, three, two, two drops. They feel like they beat, don't they? They don't poke. No, not poke. Uh, they pretty... don't nibble. They're pretty sort of healthy. And, and then we start to get onto the serious stuff. Like if you've got a true silver champion in your hand. Or, or a yeti. Yeah, a yeti definitely bashes. Bash for four. Maybe the trolls should bash as well. But some of the trolls are only two power. Yeah, what's weird that? Trolls are quite quite weedy in these games. Mm, maybe they just need a weapon in their hand before they can bash. Or a kick in the backside to enrage them. Really. So... Um, Tigers smash. Yeah, I was more thinking Arcanite Reaper smashes for five. That's what coined the uh, the word for me. Frost Elemental that would smash for five, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. definitely feels like it smashes. Definitely smashes. What else do we have? Um, that's a f- is it five two the Rocketeer? Yeah, Rocketeer. That, that's a smash smashes, smashes, doesn't it? Yes. That smashes for five. So it's even more of a smash if it's, it's got charge. charge. I feel like a demolisher should, should, should smash for five. They need well, to buff the demolisher from two damage to five. Well, so it smashes. Priest, you, know, you can buff his attacks four. Ah, but your shadow form pokes. It does. Hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe Poke's not good for Priest Shadow form. It does beat for three though when you upgrade it to the bigger Shadow form. Yeah, my favourites are Rumble because once you guys have started getting to a bit to a six power, they're kind of a bit slow in my opinion. So they're rumbling in for six. Uh, I can't think of that many six. I can think of a lot of sevens. You got Boulder Fist Ogre. He obviously rumbles in for six. Yeah, because well, we were thinking of Venture Company Mercenary. I mean, because. He's even more powerful, isn't he? At seven six. 
So, uh, we, you know, so if you can think of uh, phrases for seven through, what's the most powerful at the moment? Ten? Nine? Uh, Dreadwing. Twelve, twelve, yes. So we've got to go all the way up to twelve, twelve, or twelve power. Um, so if you can think of uh, phrases for that, for all of those, that'd be good. And if you disagree with sort of nibble, poke, beat, uh, bash, smash, and rumble, and be sure to give us your own versions of those cards. And uh, finally, guys, you know we've come to the end of this video, but we do have a Facebook page. There's not many of you using it. You know we've got like hundreds of subscribers on youtube but only about 60 of you are on our facebook page um we do read a lot of the comments actually uh more so on facebook than youtube simply because um you can have discussions better on facebook i feel yeah i agree yeah. and uh, we post uh, other interesting stuff there uh, all of the time gaming related news and things like that and you can make your requests for what you might want us to cover in the future maybe uh, but hopefully you found this uh, guide a little bit helpful, and uh, in the future when I uh, carry on making my Hearthstone videos, you maybe won't be so perplexed uh, as to what's going on. So from uh, myself and from Lee here at Calvale Gaming, see ya.